Particle-Induced X-Ray Emission Spectroscopy, also known as PIXI, by Matthew Edwards, Taylor Fulton, Damien Gonzalez, Zachary Hartke, and Sophie Olson. PIXI is a non-destructive characterization method that is used to find the elemental composition of an unknown sample. During this lab, a lab technician operated the PIXI machine. The lab technician used a known sample to calibrate the machine. He then ran the two unknown samples, a metal foil and a powder. The class was given the data from the analysis, which was then used to determine the elemental compositions of the two unknown samples. The objective of this experiment is to introduce students to PIXI for compositional identification. Afterwards, students should be able to describe major components and operation of the ion accelerator and use the collected data to conduct elemental identification analysis. This is an overview of the particle accelerator at Arizona State University used for PIXI analysis. From the ion generator oven to the final signal detectors, the beam line is about 15 meters long. The machine is composed of three main stages. The initial stage is the rubidium oven, where a plasma of rubidium is produced by heating the molten metal to about 280 degrees Celsius. This cloud of charged particles adds an electron to the inert gas in the chamber, which is usually either helium or hydrogen, giving it a negative charge. The charged gas is accelerated by about 40 kilovolts into a low energy switching magnet. The switching magnet steers the particles into the next stage, the acceleration tank. Here, the gas atoms undergo two stages of acceleration. The first half of the tank is set up to accelerate negatively charged ions. In the center of the chamber is a device which strips away the extra electrons added in the oven along with the gas's natural electrons. This charged positive nucleus is further accelerated by the second half of the tank up to its desired energy. The gas particles are now channeled into one of three detection arms, each set up for a different kind of detection. We have the microbeam line, the Rutherford backscattering spectrometry line, or the PIXI line, which we will be using in our experiment. The PIXI chamber itself, seen on the left, is open to atmospheric pressure. A thin mylar sheet separates the beam line of the accelerator from the PIXI chamber. This preserves the high vacuum pressure of the beam line while being thin enough to allow the ions to penetrate the mylar and probe the sample. The samples are held in a stage, seen on the right, inside the PIXI chamber. For PIXI, we usually use ionized hydrogen gas, referred to simply as protons. These protons bombard the sample and remove K-shell electrons in the process. Other electrons emit X-rays as they fall from higher orbitals to fill these K-shell vacancies. The PIXI detector records the x-rays in a plot of counts on the y-axis versus channel or energy on the x-axis. The first step in our experiments is to take the spectrum of a known sample like National Bureau of Standards brick clay on the left, or in our case, National Institute of Standards and Technology SRM2704 Buffalo River sediment on the right. This is a sample with known composition and each element has a known energy for its k-alpha x-rays. The spectrum of the Buffalo River standard is shown here. The energy shown on the x-axis was estimated by assuming that the energy per channel for PIXI would be 0.0123 kiloelectron volts per channel, but the actual value needs to be determined. To do this, we go into the data and find the exact channel for every known peak. The channel will correspond to the highest point locally. The peak for silicon is shown here, but the process is repeated for all other known peaks until a table is constructed. This table shows the known elements of the sample versus the peak channel number with the known energies in the last column. When all the data is collected, we plot the points on a graph and add a regression line. The slope of the regression line is the actual energy per channel figure we will use for all other unknown samples in the lab. We will identify the peak energies by multiplying the peak channel by 0.0. 0.0126 kiloelectron volts per channel in our case. We can use the peak energies to identify the component elements of our samples. Data received from PIXI was analyzed using the intensity, peak, and energy of K-alpha-1 x-rays. These x-rays were emitted from the sample and then detected and measured. The Buffalo River sediment sample was used as a known sample to calibrate the energy values. This is a common calibrator used in PIXI due to the different elements that are present in the sediment. The data of the unknown samples were then plotted using counts versus energy. 
This allowed us to identify the composition and weight percent of the unknown samples. Another point to touch on is when to use internal or external PIXI on your samples. If you have a large sample that you are not able to reduce in size, such as a large picture, or the sample may have elements that can be outgassed under vacuum, such as liquids or oils, you would want to use external PIXI. If your sample is small in size and able to be put under vacuum, such as soil samples or a computer chip, then internal PIXI is the best option. All right, so before we can actually analyze our data, we're gonna need a couple of references. These figures right here were found online at Brooker Analytical Systems, and they show the characteristic X-ray values and bonding energies for different elements. These are gonna be used to characterize which elements are found within each of the samples for PIXI. However, it's important to note that only values from zero to 12 kilo energy volts were used in this experiment. So that means that only elements from beryllium until bromine were able to be scanned. The first sample that was scanned on PIXI was NIST 2704 standard. This is a very common powder used to characterize and help us identify if the PIXI is operating correctly. As you can see from this graph, there are approximately four of the strong values. This means that there are four elements that are prominently found. However, there are also several other ones that will have to be identified later on. As seen here, all of the peaks have now been identified and labeled with their corresponding element. This was done by finding the binding energy associated with each of the peaks and writing them down. All of these values can be seen in the second column of the chart on the right. The third column of the same chart shows the theoretical binding energies for different elements. Each peak was identified with the element by finding the closest theoretical value to the experimental value. Also, since this sample was a standard, these peaks were used to calibrate the PIXI machine for all of the other samples. So, the samples were identified with aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and iron. The second sample scanned on PIXI was a foil of unknown elemental composition. The graph here only shows two strong peaks and two weak peaks, so only four elements can be identified within the sample. These four peaks were identified as manganese, cobalt, nickel, and copper. As with the standard sample, the peak energies were found and compared to the theoretical values of different elements. The four experimental peaks matched the theoretical peaks for these elements very well, showing that the PIXI calibrations were successful. Next, the elemental composition of the foil was calculated. This was done by recording the count value for each of the peaks. Then, by dividing each peak count by the total peak count, the weight percent of each element could be estimated. A sample calculation can be seen here. So, the foil was estimated with 2% manganese, 67% cobalt, 28% nickel, and 3% copper. The third sample was a powder of unknown composition. Again, there are only four clear peaks on this graph, but there are several other peaks that are harder to distinguish. In total, six different elements could be identified. Silicon, sulfur, chlorine, chromium, manganese, and arsenic. The same procedure of characterizing and labeling each peak was used as before. Once again, the chemical composition of the unknown samples was calculated. This was done by finding the peak count for each element and dividing them by the total count. This yielded approximately 3% silicon, 55% sulfur, 6% chlorine, 27% chromium, 5% manganese, and 5% arsenic. PIXI is a simple, non-destructive elemental analysis technique. It is used for identifying and quantifying elements ranging from sodium to uranium. The data obtained from PIXI is clean and the noise level is low compared to electron-based X-ray analytical techniques such as EDS. Therefore, the indexing of the peak is relatively easy. PIXI is very popular among the other ion beam analysis techniques. Using PIXIs, identification and quantification of heavier elements are possible. 
Pixie is used in combination with RSB, which can determine light element concentrations. Another advantage of Pixie is that no sample preparation is required. The vacuum chamber can hold several samples at the same time and we can analyze the next specimen continuously without opening the chamber. Overall, analysis with Pixie is simple and the result was accurate when comparing the experimental value to certified non-values.